Hi guys, my name's Andy from andyguitar.co.uk and I'm going to be talking you guys through this timeline that I talk about, which is similar to the goal setting we've looked at, what do you want to get out of guitar? And if you don't know simply where you're going, there's no chance you're going to get there, is the idea. Um, I'm going to be talking through my teaching mentality so that you guys can help yourselves to self-learn guitar online. Now this goes a little bit against, but also I'm not fully against the, the grade mentality. Um, just to briefly explain this to you, this is the traditional way that music is taught in schools and any formal education, where we have grade one, grade two, all the way up to grade eight. To give you some inclination of what those numbers mean, grade five is considered to be GCSE level, which is high school leaving age, 16 years of age in Britain, basically. Grade eight is considered to be what you would need to gain entry into university. So we're talking about a high standard of playing and learning. This is a system of learning which I don't formally back. Um, for two reasons, mainly because um, it is not a system I feel helps the people that pay me day in, day out to help them on guitar. Um, and also, it was not something that I saw that everyone who I envied and was looking to emulate when I was younger, um, none of them seemed to follow this, and if they did, they didn't follow it strictly. They did plenty of other things that actually had more benefit. Now, I'm not saying you should not do grades. If that's something that you're thinking of doing, they can really help. They do give structure. They give you the syllabus of things to learn in a really formal way. And they do count to UCAS points to university, which are the points in England we need to be able to get people into university. So they're not all bad, but don't over-rely on them and think that that is the answer, or any one thing is the answer. What we're going to be looking at now are the four stages of your guitar and musician development that lead to you achieving your goals and lead you to just being a happy, fulfilled guitarist. The one thing I have definitely seen with the grade system is that when people get to grade eight, they've achieved that number that they, that achievement that they were wanting to do since they first picked up the instrument. So many of those people that I count as good friends and have just come across now no longer play, be it piano, guitar, flute, um, really close friends have, have done this. And it's really affected me in quite a, quite a big way because I've always continued to play even if I didn't make my living as a guitar teacher or musician, I would still be playing. And there's a couple of key things um, or four key stages that I feel are imperative to make sure that's the case for you. So here they are. These are our four stages. The first stage that you're aiming to achieve is not rocket science. It's to learn some easy songs. Um, the reason I'm making this the first stage is because there are different ingredients and things that you need to learn to make sure that you achieve learning some easy songs. Those things are open chords. I start off with E and A in my beginner's course. Um, rhythm and strumming on the beat, so the beat. But also the basics of rhythm and strumming. And also, crucially, song structure. So without song structure, you have the components of a song, but you can't actually put them into a song or play something all the way through. Um, as I say, there are, there are many different things. There are many different challenges to each one of these sections, but you just need to make sure you tick all three to make sure you gain the larger goal and the larger focus of actually learning some easy songs. No one picks up a guitar to be able to do guitar exercise number 102. You all want to focus on playing some easy songs. And um, stage two is where I think too many people actually start. Harder songs. Most people who find um, myself on my channel um, find me by finding me playing a song such as Sweet Home Alabama, 
Wonderwall, Hotel California, Highway to Hell, and many of those people, when challenged with that first lesson, that has now got seven and a half million views, by the way, um, just playing an E and an A chord and strumming to the B and playing along to For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield, many of those people would struggle or it wouldn't come naturally to them, which is why we need to drill the basics absolutely get those down and you know you can always vary the songs but it's going to be the same ingredients if you follow my beginners course is the important thing so that you've got the skills to be able to do the harder songs which include more complex chords sus twos seventh chords just variations on the basic chords. Notice I'm not yet saying bar chords. I'm going to totally ignore bar chords in this whole sheet because you can get to such a high level of guitar without ever playing bar chords. I'm going to keep a couple of links in the bottom to really show you guys what advanced guitar playing can look like and that bar chords, if that's been a challenge for you, they're not the answer to playing high level guitar. Um, it also includes syncopated rhythms which are basically utilizing the off beat something which is not on that count of one two three four it's a little bit more off beat um, and more complex making it more interesting and also at this stage you want to be focusing on something which has a melody to it and something that is recognizable it would be a shame to learn a harder song and then you play it and no one's able to recognize what it is you're actually playing. So it has to be said, there's nothing massively new in those first two boxes. I'm sure you're all aware. You should start off with easy songs and then go to harder songs. You maybe weren't aware of some of those ingredients there. However, you know, I'm not breaking the mold too much so far. It is in stages three and four that I'm really making you guys aware what you should really be aiming for that falls out, that doesn't necessarily qualify as just a harder song. So these essentially are our goals, but there's a specific order to them and they can be very specific to you. There's gonna be so many different ones here and I want it to be personal to you when you think of this and hopefully this will make you think about your playing and practice time in a couple of different ways. Um, stage three, play with other musicians. This is something that I provide for my private students, jam classes, or even that's something that's been very beneficial um, this year, especially something I've encouraged, is just getting people in a pair. Pairing people up that are in the same genre of music, that wanna learn the same sorts of songs, um, that I think we'll get on personality wise. In the past I've done groups of three, four or five and I've taught them all at my home studio and it's had mixed results. I've had to be very careful with the people that I group together no matter what the situation. Um, acoustic guitarists have been definitely more difficult to put in a larger group than electric ones so I would definitely recommend uh, a pair if you are an acoustic musician or even trying to find someone who is um you know plays piano or a drummer or singers just other musicians okay that's easy to say where are you guys learning guitar online probably watching this at home you might never have you know met another musician you might have never just come across one before never you know had any friends that played others you might not remember anyone since school um so the best places that i found are certainly Open mic nights. Open mic nights have been a great service to me to find like-minded musicians and be inspired as to what I actually want to do with, um, with the actual guitar. What do you want to be able to play? What do you want to be able to aim for? Um, of course, great. The, the best people to try and play with are the people that you already know, friends. If there's a friend down the road from you, two doors down, who plays guitar and you've not met up with him yet to play guitar or is it the other side of town, please do try and make it regular, but you've just got to start. This is the same as like having a gym buddy. If you have a gym buddy, 
you're going to make more progress because you're both going to encourage each other to go regular. You know, you might not feel it like practicing or um, going to the gym that day, going for a run that day. But if you've got your friend who's saying, we're we going today, you're more likely to say yes. It's simple as that. But there's so many other benefits, the feedback that they can provide, the things that you can learn from them. Um, it's quite um, amazing, really. You can also rely on online ads. My function band um, that I've just ceased to be in Northern Vinyl, um, they found me through an online ad that I placed basically advertising myself on a site called Band Mix. There are hundreds of them. There's plenty of classified ads. There'll be ones that are local to your area. And it doesn't have to be for a band. It can just be for, hey, I'm learning guitar. If there's any singers out there or any other guitarist, someone who wants to play a bit of lead or rhythm together and is into these, this style of music, these bands, Go right ahead, get in touch. It can be as, as you know as low pitched as that, as casual as you want to make it, but you need to play with other people to encourage you to do so. If you're with a guitar teacher, a good guitar teacher, not even an amazing one, just a good guitar teacher, should run jam classes where he groups his students or her students together and also networks with other um, teachers in the local area to get like-minded musicians together, possibly running events, but even just being aware of, hey, what students have you got? Have you got anyone that likes rock lead guitar? I've got another guy that likes rock rhythm and lead guitar. Let's get these two guys together and they can play. While these things are happening, so say the first time you've gone to an open mic night a couple of times and you haven't met anyone yet, it's a shame to waste that time. So this is where I really recommend to benefit all of these to play along to the record. Learn some songs, probably well-known ones are just the best way to go so that you know this is something that will feed into, you know, being able to play along with, with friends, you know. Do learn some things like Wonderwall that most people are likely to know so that you've got something to play as that first time when you meet. And to give people an idea of your level as well if you can play something that they know. But play along to the record, it works on your timing, it works on joining in to music that's already playing and that will prepare you for playing with others. This for many people is a step beyond what they were already thinking. Maybe this is a very solo and a personal journey for you. Um, even if that's the case, it, once you're open to this, it is not a big step at all, but it's a crucial one to find in the most crucial of all, I think, your musical outlet, which is really your goals. If your goal at one point was to play a bar chord or be able to play a easy song, a harder song, then this is the long game thing. This is, this is the thing that you have in mind that initially inspired you to play that first song or that first chord or to pick up the guitar in the first place. I've made a couple of videos on this now. Remembering why you picked up the guitar in the first place. And that's your musical outlet. And this is the thing that that grading system, grade one, grade two, grade three, does not give you once that grading system has either been completed or you've gone as far as you can go in that or it has served its purpose. So this, for example, the obvious ones are playing a band, or join a band, put ads out for a band, playing live, be this solo, on your own, or a duo, or with three of you, they can be guitarists, they can be singers, it could just be you playing with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, it can be really fun. Um, it doesn't have to be a performance based outlet. But guitar is a performance skill, and I think so many learners kind of forget that point, which is why number four, I would say, is the most crucial of this whole video. Um, this could be as easy as creating ideas, which is basically songwriting, or just being able to play the guitar and find a way to express yourself rather than just playing songs all the time. These first two are so songs based, which may be why you play guitar in the first place. However, it's not gonna lead to 
a really fulfilled guitar playing life and not going to make you want to do it, once you've played the few songs that you want to be able to play, you want to be able to create your own things, your own ideas. Just be able to play it and not be able to play one particular song or the other. Create something that sounds good to you, um, that's in a certain sort of style. Um, recording. One great thing I, I do in lessons is record my students so that they can give their own feedback on their own performances, which can be scary. It can be like hearing your voice back on the answer machine going, oh, I don't sound like that, do I? Um, oh, that's, that's awful. But once you've got over the initial shock of you hearing yourself back, um, that provides the feedback that a teacher can give you. But it gives you, you for free. If you you can even just use your your iPhone, or even I've been amazed how good devices such as the the iPad or even iPhones. Or I'm a bit of an iPhone person, it has to be said. But any sort of uh, tablet or mobile, how good the video quality is and how good the sound quality is, just to provide you feedback, not to multi-track your own album or anything, but to be able to record what it sounded like on that day. It's absolutely fantastic as a record of your progress. Video is amazing. The only person that needs to see that is you. So if you're saying, I'm never going to play in a band, I'm never going to play live, that's just not in my sights, record yourself so that you can give yourself feedback and as a record of what you've achieved, what you're doing, and then where to go from there. Some, but not many of my students, but some of my students also want to be able to make their own YouTube videos in a similar sort of way that I do, but just performances. Um, but as I say, music exists as a means to express yourself and for others to enjoy that means of expressing yourself. And unless you're aiming for all four of those stages, and they can overlap. Sometimes you'll have someone to play with when you're still learning easy songs, which is fantastic. Um, sometimes you'll start songwriting after you've done your first chord, and that's great. Um, sometimes you'll be going to open mic nights, you know, before you've learned your first chord, and that's great as well. But unless you're trying to tick each one of these stages, um, unless you've made a plan of action to be able to actually do those, whichever one of these you know, things like open mic nights, playing in a band, uh, making sure that your songs are a bit more complex after you've been playing guitar a certain amount of time. Um, these things lead on to happy, successful, and um, fulfilled guitarist. Whatever that success means to you, it doesn't have to include performance, but in my opinion, it does have to include playing with other musicians. Just finally, I have said this is a timeline, so I should give an inkling as to how long all these things could take you. These should totally be taken as a pinch of salt, even with a, a fantastic teacher, you know, someone who's far better than me and tailored for a, an individual. Every student's gonna learn different things at a different pace and they're gonna pick up each thing at a different place and each of the different ingredients. So there's no, you shouldn't be at a certain stage within a year, certainly. I'm, I do want to make that clear before I say this. But as an idea, because I've called it timeline, um, easy songs should be, say, your first four to six months. You know, zero to six months, I should say, really. Um, harder songs is around six months. Should be going for something that's a little bit more complex, but it's whatever's more complex for you. It should have some element of recognizable or a, a melody, um, R guitar riffs are a great thing. Something more complex chords, you know, not just staying to E, A, and D, C, and G, you know, doing something that's a bit more. Um, after six months, and once a two, three, or four harder songs have been kind of y you're there with, um, between six months to one year is when you want to be looking at play with others. You can play with others from the start. I'm not saying beginners courses that have, or beginners lessons that have more than one person are a bad thing. They're just not for everyone. I found it better to wait until certain things have been mastered. And then certainly, if you're not aware what your musical outlet is, at least one of these things should be very much a big part of your practice routine and your thoughts for where you're wanting to go. Um, you want to be looking at a musical outlet 
after a year or up to a year, you know, if it takes two years to actually get, or if it takes five years to actually get the right band going or the right person to, to play with or to actually learn how to record something, that's all well and good. Don't think, oh, my God, a year, I'm supposed to do all this within a year. It doesn't have to be, but it wants, you want to be aware of each one of these things and be coaching yourself to, towards it. So this whole video has been a little bit self-help, I guess. Um, there's a few self-help concepts in there, but if you're learning guitar by yourself online using videos that you find, guess what? You're part of the self-help club. Welcome. So, these are just my ideas. Hopefully, they've set off a couple of sparks for you. Um, these two bits are definitely what my part of my, or my, my job is for my website, andyguitar.co.uk. We got the beginner's course. We got some harder lessons and some great songs on there for you to be able to do. These two things are the things that I help my private students with very much so giving them the right people and the right outlets and recording them, providing live opportunities where possible. And these are the things that don't translate as well to just putting on a website and putting on YouTube, okay? These are things you've got to coach yourself through or find a way to do this. And um, that's what I've been helping you with today. Hopefully that's been something that will serve you well and that you've enjoyed. Please subscribe if you like what I do. I'm sure I'll see you again. Bye for now.